An epic search will today reach its climax. We'll crown one British bakery the best. 60 bakeries from all over the country competed. I've been waiting for someone to do that with British bacon. Just three are still standing. The challenges have been big. 100 savoury, 100 sweet. I'm going to be counting. If we don't get the spice mix right, it will be game over for us. Bold. I don't think I'm panicking. I'm just slightly anxious. Our bakeries are capable of excellence. Nothing less will do. And delicious. It's really nice. Oh, yeah. So far, so good. Professional pride is at stake. I don't want to give up now. We're going down, mate. We are going down. There have been triumphs. I think this is one of the best focaccias I've tasted in this country. <laughs> and disasters. Oh, we're making these again. I actually think they're mad. But it's time to find the winner. And the title goes to... Of Britain's Best Bakery. It's the grand final of a six-week-long search for Britain's Best Bakery. This is it. It all culminates here. The pressure is most definitely on. Crowning the winner today, the judges. Cake maker extraordinaire Mitch Turner and award-winning chef and artisan baker Peter Sidwell. This competition is really tight. There is very little to separate between our bakeries. Whichever bakery wants it the most and pushes themselves the most will be crowned Britain's best bakery. Now just three bakeries remain. The Angel Share, contemporary bakers and champions of local produce from Richmond, Yorkshire. We don't want to slow down at this point. We really want to impress the judges. <laughs> Maison Macy, Gallic classicists bringing French flair to Moseley, Birmingham. Eating the last task right, it's a must. Uh, you can't come second, I think, to this challenge. And the modernising brother and sister team from the Cake Shop Bakery in Woodbridge, Suffolk. There's so much riding on this last challenge. Well done. Today is the culmination of a three-day final. And the judges have saved their toughest task till last. It's the ultimate challenge for any baker. The wedding cake. It's the most significant day of any young couple's life and the most important bake any baker can be tasked with. Our three competitors must create a bespoke wedding cake for one happy couple. Bakeries, I'd like to introduce you to Ashley and Andrew. They need a wedding cake. Yeah. Ashley and Andrew have known each other since they were six and are due to tie the knot very soon. We're both really, really excited. I hope I don't become a bit too emotional. <laughs> I might cry, I don't know. Um... <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be the romantic wedding vows that make our bride well up, rather than a disastrous wedding cake. The cake is the final piece of the jigsaw for a dream day, which they've planned to perfection. Well, our theme is an English rose garden. We love something that's breathtakingly beautiful, with intricate detailing of flowers or vines and leaves. Hopefully with just a few complementary colours, sort of whites and pale pinks. We'd like it to have at least four tiers. It has to be structurally interesting or unique, so not necessarily your round or square tiers. Uh, and we're looking for a different flavour sponge for each tier. The couple will sample the finalists' efforts and will pick just one of the creations to serve to their 200 guests. Very best of luck, bakeries. This is the final challenge. Make it count. To fulfil Ashley and Andrew's brief and prove to the judges that they're worthy winners, our finalists must summon all their creative and technical mastery. All three bakeries are starting work in their own kitchens. What's the brief? Four tears. Four tears, yeah. It's cake, different flavour. For example, lemon, chocolate, mint, rose, strawberry, orange. Their first task, to draw up the look and design of their cakes. But that's pretty bog standard, isn't it? Yeah. And they don't want bog standard. No, they don't want it to feel like every other wedding cake. It is very important to make sure the customer get what they want. We're throwing everything at it. We really are. I think we're on to something. Yeah. First to the Midlands, where Birmingham's Maison Macy are grappling with the brief. Strawberry. Strawberry. Although the Michelin-trained brothers are French patisserie specialists, 
they're on unfamiliar ground here. We have no experience in making the traditional English different here, wedding cake. They're planning four different flavor sponges, and the first to get a trial run is strawberry. The bride and groom want a different flavor in every layer. We don't really make this cake in the cafe, a smaller version, but not actually base for any cake. They're making this cake using the creaming method, where butter and sugar are creamed together before the rest of the ingredients are added. This should mean a stronger sponge to support their four-tier structure. They add an artificial strawberry flavor. We'll have to see how it comes out after baking. And freeze-dried strawberries. To try to bump up that flavor. Then it's into the oven. These French classicists aren't afraid to venture into uncharted waters, but they don't always get it right. In the final's first challenge, baking for Old Spitalfields Market, their decision to create a high volume of supersized bakes led to a drop in quality. The quiche is well flavoured. I think the pastry is raw on the bottom. But they redeemed themselves yesterday with their iconic bake, a balti tam with pork terrine that showcased their technical wizardry and creative prowess. The judges will be expecting to see these skills when they visit today. But will they be sold on the fruity sponge prototype? Well, if I didn't know that was strawberry cake, I wouldn't be able to tell it was strawberry I cake. I have the strawberries. The little tiny, tiny bits. Kind of tastes like strawberry milkshake or strawberry ice cream in a cake. It's quite a synthetic strawberry flavour. Mm. It's not that wonderful, fresh, summer burst of garden strawberries. Well, I'm not sure if that's right for an oh, elegant yeah. wedding. The Gallic gastronomers have tried to create an English-style sponge, but the flavour got lost in translation. I feel they've got an awful long way to go yet to make sure they produce a cake that can win this competition. In Yorkshire, Alex and her assistant Di have stepped out of the Angel Share Bakery to seek inspiration for the wedding theme of an English rose garden. I don't know how you feel, but when I think rose garden, these are the type of roses I think of. Wedding cakes aren't part of the Angel Share's repertoire, and the last time Alex made one was for her own wedding 14 years ago. They want delicate pinks, yeah. and I think that's just lovely. Back at the bakery, they're using the flower colours as inspiration for potential fruity sponge flavours. Rose and strawberry, the orange. Yeah lemon, pomegranate. The bride and groom have requested a different flavour sponge in each tier, and their favourites include chocolate, strawberry and orange. Pomegranate, definite. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, we should, yeah, we'll see what it yeah, tastes like. I think so. A pomegranate sponge is certainly off-piste, not a fruit that featured in the happy couple's brief. It could be totally disgusting, and then we'll just decide not to do it. They start the sample sponge by creaming butter and sugar, then slowly adding eggs, before folding in self-raising flour and adding orange zest for a citrus note. It's like cough syrup. How much? I've no idea. I mean, it might, it might be absolutely... Next, pomegranate syrup is added, along with molasses and vanilla extract. Alex and Di's flair for great flavours has served them well in this competition. But in the market challenge, the judges felt they lost their identity when they served up bakes with no regional profile. They've been such strong advocates mm. of supporting their local produce in all of the previous rounds, yet today that seems to have gone out the window. They returned to their roots in yesterday's iconic bake, marrying local venison with bilberries. But the judges felt their pie fell short of iconic status. I could get a venison pie with local ale anywhere in the country. So today the pressure is on for them to pull something spectacular out of the bag. Colour in now. They add food colouring to give a pink hue to the pomegranate and orange sponge. It does look a bit like salmon pate. I mean, we can always colour it up a little bit more. Yeah. And to pack a real pomegranate punch, more syrup is added, along with orange flower water. It might give that kind of exotic flavour that I suppose you'd associate with the pomegranate, so it might just bring that out a little bit. 
Pomegranate and orange is far from a conventional cake flavor. So will the visiting judges deem the sponge suitable for the wedding brief? Alex and Di serve their prototype with a raspberry buttercream. I quite like the flavour profile. It's really interesting. Mm. It has got that zesty orange flavour, but the pomegranate is absolutely there. It adds that kind of depth of flavour to the cake. I would be very happy to be a guest at this wedding and have a slice of that cake. Thank you. Thank you. The Yorkshire Baker's pomegranate prototype has triumphed on taste. The Angel Share have very much shown us what they're good at, and that's choosing good flavours. If they can get the design to marry up with that, they could be onto an absolute winner. At the cake shop bakery in Suffolk, David and Lindsay aren't complete novices when it comes to making cakes for special occasions. We've made a lot of celebration cakes. Yeah, probably around yeah, 20 or 30. And their dad, who's just passed the bakery over to them, is also on hand. He's made an enormous amount of wedding cakes, so we're going to be asking him a lot of questions. <laughs> and between them, they've come up with what they hope is a winning combination of flavours. They're planning four different sponges of vanilla, chocolate, orange and rose. And the first bake off the blocks, a family tried and tested chocolate sponge. This is my mum's chocolate cake recipe. David mixes cocoa powder with hot water and a little orange zest, whilst Lindsay creams butter and sugar before adding eggs and flour. The cocoa mix is added and it's ready to bake. And 60. Drawing on their family's baking heritage and giving it a new twist is what this baking brother and sister do best. In the market challenge, their ambitious range of artisan bakes tempted customers and made them the most money. Cake Shop Bakery, you took just over £130. Well done. Well done. Their win put them ahead of their rivals, but in the iconic bake, they took a big risk by opting to create a fish pie. I was a little worried about their product. I think fish is a difficult ingredient to work with in a bakery. Their tendency to push themselves and their bakes could land them in hot water if they're not careful today. With their chocolate sponge made, the siblings turned their attention to the largest tier, the 16-inch vanilla sponge base. We were going to do one fat cake, but now we're going to do two thinner ones and we're going to sandwich them together. But when the judges visit to find out how their plans are shaping up, cake guru Mitch spots a fundamental flaw. You need to be very careful with structure. The idea of putting a vanilla cake on the bottom has got to support the weight of all the other tiers. Traditional fruit cakes work well as base tiers, but fruit cake is not in the couple's brief. So David and Lindsay are going to have to think of another solution. The worst thing you could possibly have is a wedding cake which crumbles <laughs> before the couple <laughs> cut the cake. The alarm bells were ringing the base tier as a big vanilla cake. It absolutely has to stand up throughout the entire duration of the reception. So with a sponge that might not hold the weight of their four tiers, the cake shop bakery must go back to the drawing board. The Angel Shares pomegranate prototype has stood up to scrutiny, but Maison Macy's strawberry sponge didn't shine. The most important bakes of their careers are underway, but they've all got a long way to go. Refreshing afternoon entertainment. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze. One day, everyone will beat cancer. 
And the sooner you give, the sooner that day will come. What is your definition of happiness? A clear horizon. Nothing to worry about. Western Power Distribution. Power for life. This week in bet365bingo.com, all the chat. All right, man. Hello. Hiya. Oh, and all the hot goss. <laughs> Get that glam bingo head look. Ooh. And this week, deposit £10 and get £20 free! Oh. <laughs> Great chat, plenty of laughs and tons and tons of amazing offers. Calling all bingo heads! Play great bingo now at bet365bingo.com Refreshing afternoon entertainment. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze. The hunt for Britain's best bakery has reached the grand final. And our three finalists are in the midst of their trickiest task yet. 16, 14, 12. Designing a wedding cake to please two exacting lovebirds. We really like fresh flavours, um, so it would be brilliant if each sponge could be a different flavour. It needs to be at least four tiers, uh, and something structurally interesting and unique would be great. The bakeries have all been testing out prototypes for their cakes. Later, they'll all be heading into the kitchen together to assemble and decorate them. But now it's time to finalise their plans. Totally sure that the other two are going to come up with something really special, so we've got, mm. to, we've got to be super on it. After the judges criticised their plan for a vanilla sponge base, the Cake Shop Bakery have decided to draw on their speciality bake, which wowed in the heats. We're going to rethink our root cake recipe. Made using beetroot, carrot, parsnip and sweet potato, their root cake is an unusual combination. But for these maverick bakers, that's all the more reason to use it. It looks much, it's beautiful. They're giving it a seasonal spin by replacing the parsnip with a summer vegetable. Something which works really well with carrots is courgette. And they're also playing around with new spice combinations, adding ground cardamom and cinnamon. Now the siblings have sorted their cake flavours, Mitch and Peter want to know what their wedding cake is going to look like. We're going to stick to what we're good at. A clean, beautiful, simple, visually impressive cake. And I think we've decided to have just one colour. The simplest designs have to be executed flawlessly to be able to carry them off. What this cake lacks in elaborate decoration, it will make up for in size with three double-height cakes stacked one on top of the other and the fourth tier perched on pillars. It will just lead the eye right up to the top, which is going to be visually the big impact of our cake. What are you going to put on the top? Well, we had an idea to have two sugar-crafted roses. It's a simple and elegant plan, but Mitch has some misgivings. I feel that they are playing it quite safe in terms of the delivery of presentation. But if they do it flawlessly, it's going to be stunning. Simplicity, as long as it is executed at a really high level, is a beautiful thing. And I think they get that, and they've got the skills that they need to deliver something elegant, refined, and taste beautiful. 18 ounces of butter, 18 ounces of sugar. In Yorkshire, the Angel Share have had a confidence boost from their unusual pomegranate sponge tasting, which the judges loved. We weren't sure how it was going to work out, and it's a really pleasant surprise. I think everybody, yeah, we all like it. Such is their newfound faith in the fruit, Alex and I are putting the pomegranate sponge centre stage in two tiers of their cake. For the other two sponge layers, they're going with orange, one of the bride and groom's favoured flavours. The combinations all work with one another, 
the jam, the flavouring, the buttercream. It works at each layer, but it works as a whole as well. The brief also calls for a unique structure. Alex and I have opted for oval-shaped sponges, which they'll ice in varying shades of pink before stacking them one on top of the other. But their plan needs to pass muster with the judges. The bride and groom particularly asked for a unique way of stacking and presenting the cake. Well, we think the oval shape is quite unusual. Do you think it's going to be impressive enough, make enough of a statement? The fact that we're going to do graded colours throughout, we thought that would be you know, really nice. So a darker pink here, fading as it comes up. Yes. Very fashionable, creating that kind of ombre style cake. Yes. Yeah. Their colour scheme may be bang on trend, but Mitch has concerns about the simple stacking. I feel the Angel Share are creating a very elegant, very timeless, very mm. classic style wedding cake for this challenge, but I'm not sure that they've really pushed themselves to create something that's going to be winning. In Birmingham, it's back to square one for David and Remy from Maison Macy, after the judges poured scorn on their strawberry sponge. We've listened to the judges' advice and we've, uh, we've tweaked with the flavour. They've scrapped the strawberry and are turning to familiar French flavours that will pack more punch. Chocolate, amaretto, pistachio and hazelnut. I think we've been adventurous in our flavours and we want the right balance. So on a wedding, I think you want something quite uh, appreciable by everybody. They make the same batter for each sponge, creaming butter and sugar together before adding eggs, flour and vanilla extract. To one batch, they add cocoa powder, coffee liqueur, and chunks of dark chocolate. A second is flavoured with an almond liqueur and crushed almond biscuits. A third with chopped pistachios and vanilla liqueur. And a fourth with roasted hazelnuts and Irish cream. Their plan is to combine all four flavoured sponges in every tier of their cake. Everyone will have um, exactly the same cake. As well as these ambitious flavours, the brothers have come up with a spectacular structure. A glass vase will bear the top two tiers. The judges have spotted a hitch. What size is this vase? The vase would be about that high. Having a central column is the most unstable of all the ways you can stack a wedding cake. If the glass vase comes into contact with these base two tiers and starts to bear down, it's going to really push through those cakes and then it will start to crack and the whole thing could collapse. Maison Macy are going all out to win, but their design could harbour a fundamental flaw. If Maison Macy get this wedding cake right, it could be really significant in this competition. Get it wrong and it could be an absolute disaster. I just hope they're not building themselves up for a catastrophic fall. It looks absolutely beautiful. Super. In Suffolk, ambitious bakers David and Lindsay get their reversioned root cake into the oven. They're really good. Oh. And turn their attention to the second of their four different flavour sponges, Rose. Made using the same basic recipe as their chocolate cake, they replace cocoa powder with rose water. It's really good. Having baked and perfected their pomegranate sponge, the Angel Share move on to their second and final flavour, orange Madeira. So a little bit of juice instead of the um, milk. Orange zest and juice should help with the taste whilst maintaining the moisture in the sponge. It's poured into oval tins and baked for 45 minutes. The final bakes of the competition are out of the oven. There's no margin for error. These wedding sponges need to be perfect. That's fuck, that's... Yeah. Birmingham's Maison Macy have put their faith in four different flavoured sponges. Hazelnut, chocolate, amaretto and pistachio, which will all feature in every tier. I'm quite happy. They're all quite even and straight, so we should make our job easier into building the cake. Yorkshire's Angel Share have gone with an orange Madeira and off-piece pomegranate sponges. I think with um, all the flavour combinations as well. Yeah. And the style of the oval cake, I think it's a real winner. And Suffolk's Cake Shop Bakery have produced a rose cake, a chocolate cake... It is a good one. ..an orange cake... It smells so orangey. ..and finally their trademark root cake, 
updated with summer vegetables. For the end result, I'm hoping, I don't hope, I know it's going to be delicious. But now the pressure really ramps up a gear, as the bakeries must turn their sponges into show-stopping centrepieces in the same kitchen as their rivals and with the judges watching their every move. Refreshing afternoon entertainment. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze. The fuel-efficient engine that powers this car also powers this one. The Ford Focus with EcoBoost engine technology to help you go further. What is your definition of happiness? A clear horizon. Nothing to worry about. With EasyJet, enjoy allocated seating on every flight. Glide straight through the airport with the EasyJet app. And travel with confidence on one of Europe's most punctual airlines. Flying with EasyJet has never been easier. This is Generation EasyJet. Refreshing afternoon entertainment. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze. The grand final of Britain's Best Bakery is hotting up. The judges have summoned all three finalists to a cookery school in Surrey for the final stage of this high-stakes challenge to fill, decorate and finesse their wedding cakes ready for the big day. I still think we've got a fairly good chance. I think we're slightly more relaxed now we're here and it's the last stage and we just want to give it our best. To have. Mitch say even that the cake is all right would be such a lovely feeling. <laughs> to add to the pressure, the bakers are working alongside each other and seeing, for the first time, what their rivals are creating. We've all got big cakes as we've got little flat ones. Doubting now we've made the right choice. Under the watchful eyes of judges Mitch and Peter, all have just eight hours to turn their basic sponge into four tiered English rose garden themed wedding cakes that will dazzle and delight our bride and groom. I'd love to see some intricate rose detailing, perhaps some vines or leaves, so that's really important. A couple of colours, like whites and pinks, because a pale pink rose is the, the colour of the day. At the cake shop bakery, self taught baker David gets cracking with the sponge filling. I'm just making the first of four butter creams. Using a basic mix of butter and icing sugar, David will make a different flavour butter cream for each of their four different flavour sponges. Rose, orange, chocolate and their revamped root cake. A beast of a base here that hasn't gone unnoticed by Mitch and Peter. Cake Shop Bakery, very ambitious, grand plans, huge cake. These unconventional bakers are hoping that a big cake will make a big impression. You guys have been quite ambitious. Are you going for broke now? I think at this stage you've got to go big or go home. Alex, are you putting any like, liquid in here, like vanilla or anything? The contemporary Yorkshire bakers at the Angel Share have made two different flavour sponges, pomegranate and orange. Starting off with the uh, raspberry buttercream. 
To fill the cakes, Di is whipping up a raspberry buttercream to use in every tier. Half icing sugar to half butter, and then we we'll just add the, um, the raspberry. And then that will be used to sandwich the cakes together. French baking brothers Maison Macy have made four flavours of sponge. Hazelnut, chocolate, pistachio and amaretto. And we'll use all in every tier. Not only that, but David and Remy have got ambitious ideas for multiple filling flavours. The first of which is a fancy Italian meringue buttercream. Remy adds fresh vanilla and butter to eggs and beets. He slowly adds sugar syrup, made by boiling water and sugar, and continues to beat until he has a meringue-like texture. The buttercream is smothered on one sponge, a raspberry coulis, made with fresh raspberries, sugar and raspberry liqueur on the next, and finally a chocolate ganache, dark chocolate melted with double cream. But Mitch has her doubts. So you're having buttercream and Go ganache now. and coulis? Yeah. Okay, that sounds like a lot of movement. You've got, mo you've got four tiers yeah. and lots of jam and lots of... Will it be a very thin layer? Slip. I think you need to get, make sure you get the balance right because otherwise what you could find is the whole thing's going to sit like liquid cement. Yeah. You're putting a glass vase, aren't you, in your cake? The structure's going to be absolutely essential. Well, it's the final. We have to push ourselves. Pushing themselves is one thing, ignoring the laws of physics quite another. From the structure and the reality of what the cake needs to do, there's kind of a lot of questions to be asked on that one. To try and ensure their cake is as sturdy as possible, the brothers chill each tier. Because if I build it and the bottom layers aren't set, the weight is just going to crush it. Three hours in, and with all four tiers filled, intuitive baker David from the Cake Shop Bakery embarks on the next tricky task, the icing. Like all the bakeries, he's using shop-bought sugar paste, a soft, ready-to-roll icing. If you overwork it, it can stretch. If you underwork it, it can crack. And with their very big, very simple or white design, any imperfections will be very difficult to hide. Oh, it's perfect. As ever, Alex and Di at the Angel Share are keeping a keen eye on the competition. Could land a helicopter on that. But a sizeable cake brings its own problems, and Mitch gives Lindsay a reality check. When you have such a large cake, don't underestimate how quickly it's going to swallow up all the decorations that you're making. It's not unusual for a cake the size that you have to have at least 400 roses to cover it. Yorkshire's Angel Share are using a different shade of pink sugar paste to cover each of their four tiers. Perfect. Each sponge will be placed on a board. Oh, there is quite a big lip dye. Can you help me whether it's centred? But cake making queen Mitch spots a snag. These boards are different sizes to the cakes. Right, there's about half an inch around the cake just to give us a slight lip. What you would normally do, you fit the cake on a board exactly the same size. Right. And then what you do is you ice the cake and board right down to the base of the sides, right. all in one. This isn't going to give you the ability to get that very neat, flawless finish. What you could do, you can fill that gap between the tiers with some of your frosted rose petals and lavender so it fills all around. Got the wrong size cake boards, stacking them isn't going to quite look how we thought it would do. Inexperience just coming in, really big style. David and Remy of Maison Macy have been closely watching their rivals' icing efforts. Our tactic was to see what the other one did and follow their, <laughs> in their footsteps. Um, so if it goes wrong, I can blame it on the others. <laughs> and it's time for David to ice his first ever wedding cake. Et voila! I don't know what was all the fuss about. Yeah, I'm really glad it was my first attempt. But the flower-shaped tear may be more of a challenge. It was first time lucky. With all their tears filled and iced, the bakery's focus moves to the really intricate work, the decoration. The bride and groom have requested an English rose garden theme, and at the cake shop bakery, 
Lindsay is using sugar paste to make a cluster of large roses to adorn the top of the cake. I haven't done them before. As well as lots of individual petals. It's just going to be, I think, almost literally hundreds of petals falling down from the top. Lindsay places each petal on a plastic spoon to hold their shape as they set. But with four enormous tiers to decorate, she has her work cut out. Alex and Di at the Angel's Share also need to make lots of sugar paste roses to hide their oversized cake boards. Artistic license. But the judges are concerned that they too are going to run out of time. The Angel's Share are putting a huge amount of detail mm. into the very few flowers they've actually made. Mm. But this could be at the expense of actually having enough flowers mm. to decorate their cake. With 45 minutes to go, self-taught baker David uses a royal icing, made using egg whites and icing sugar, to pipe on intricate details. There's quite a lot of pressure, especially when it's finishing touches time, because there's no way back. This one-time theatre director knows that this is the performance of a lifetime. Maison Macy are also using royal icing, to hand pipe elaborate designs onto each tier. But with 25 minutes left, Mitch has spotted a problem lurking beneath the surface. Because you are using a meringue style buttercream. It's got egg white, it's aerated, it has a lot of air in it, and it's causing the sugar paste to swell and to blow. Now this is a problem that a lot of cake decorators suffer from, especially when it's very, very warm. If this were happening to me, I'd actually be stripping the cake now, taking it right back to the actual basic cake, and starting again. You're not going to have that luxury, but you can see that can't stay as it is because of the way it's blowing. See that? If you insert the knife there and then squeeze out all the air around it and then with the pink icing and inject that icing to seal up the hole. What you've done now is we've forced out all that air just keep your eye out on all the cakes, David, because it could happen to any of those. This problem with the better cream can definitely affect our chances to win. Bakeries, you've got 20 minutes left. If it's not finished by then, it's not going on the cake. In a last-ditch effort to bulk out their sugar craft flowers... Oh, no, they should do it. ..the angel share makes some simple ribbon decorations... We should have time to do more white buds. Whilst Lindsay is taking it to the wire, getting her roses finished. I'm a bit anxious about getting these roses big and fat enough. David gives the individual sugar petals a pearly sheen with a luster spray. And as the elaborate piping continues at Maison Macy, Remy uses moulds to create sugar paste leaves, flowers, and butterflies. Time's up in the kitchen, but now for the moment of truth. Assembling the cakes for judging. I don't know if it's good enough, but if it isn't, then we couldn't have done any better. It's part of the learning curve. Unfortunately, it's yeah. today. <laughs> We've done the best we can. In the time. Yes. Yep. Yeah. All of the bakeries are heading across the county to RHS Wisley where each cake will be presented in all its glory. Tiny bit towards you. Their work here is almost done. We're moments away from discovering who will be crowned Britain's best bakery. Entertainment. Everyday favourites, sponsored by Febreze.
What is your definition of happiness? A clear horizon. Nothing to worry about. Dear hard work, you drag me out of bed every morning and keep me awake at night. You're anything but a dream job. The aches and pains remind me just how real you are. Every day, you pose new challenges, but I rise to all of them. You are the voice that tells me, keep going. And you're right, because I was born to run. Martin's put the wrong fuel in his car. That's a big deal. If he misses a date with Jenny, she might think he doesn't care. <laughs> she might write a song about his piggy eyes, which becomes an overnight smash sensation in 146 countries, including Finland. <laughs> Don't worry, Martin. Unlike others, we'll cover you even if you fill up with the wrong fuel. Green flag, no matter what. Refreshing Afternoon Entertainment. Everyday Favourites, sponsored by Febreze. It's the moment our finalists have been waiting for. 60 bakeries from across the country have been whittled down to just three. Now one of them is about to be crowned Britain's best. All our hope are resting onto that cake and hopefully it's the, the winner. I'd say this is probably just about the best I think we could do. To win the, the whole um, competition would be, just mean absolutely everything. It really would be the ultimate. Our bride and groom, Ashley and Andrew, requested an English rose garden themed wedding cake. Today at RHS Wisley, they'll decide which bakery has best fulfilled their brief and which cake they'd like at their wedding. But it'll be judges Mitch and Peter who'll decide which bakery will take the title. First, it's the French patissiers Maison Macy. Will their elaborately iced four-tier cake, adorned with sugar paste flowers, leaves and butterflies, be the show-stopping centerpiece that Ashley and Andrew are after? What are your first thoughts? It's amazing. From a distance of the game, close up, there's so much detail. It's really intricate, isn't it? Yeah. Part of the brief was to make a structurally unique cake, so Remy and David have incorporated a vase into their design. Do you feel they have fulfilled everything within your brief? Definitely. I think they really have. And so <laughs> yeah. You've really taken the design to heart. Yeah, well done. Thank you. It's amazing. The brothers nearly came unstuck when their icing began to swell. Wow. But a quick repair job saved the day. Every tier has chocolate, pistachio, hazelnut and amaretto sponges that are sandwiched together with a chocolate ganache, an Italian buttercream and a raspberry coulis. How does that sound? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. But will seven different elements in every slice all work in harmony? I just think it was really clever. The flavours all, I thought, blended in really well together. I think my favourite was the chocolate with the chocolate chip. You just got that sudden burst. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. All the four mm. flavours did really work very well together. Yeah. Doing that is, is really, really is unique and um, make fantastic. Maison Macy's original spin has impressed the happy couple. But do the judges share their enthusiasm? It's brave to put so many different elements in such a ornate structure. It certainly is the most ambitious wedding cake. I think the actual cake itself is a little bit dry. I think it has wonderful flavour, but the sponges themselves could have had a little bit of syrup in. The combination of flavours is very good, and you definitely made the right decisions on which flavours to combine together. For two bakers who've never tackled a wedding cake before, you have made an incredible attempt. So well done. Next, it's the contemporary bakers from Yorkshire, the Angel's Share. Their cake takes inspiration from a real rose garden, incorporating various shades of rose colours. An abundance of sugar paste roses, bumblebees and green ribbon decorations 
cleverly hide the oversized boards that each tier is resting upon. What do you think? It's beautiful. I really like the colour scheme. I love how there's so many different flowers and petals. Do you think this cake suits your personality? Yeah, well, it definitely suits you, I think. Sort of uh, <laughs> very, very flowery. <laughs> A wonderful zing of orange has just exploded out of that cake. Alex and I went for a fruity theme. The first tier to be tasted is an orange sponge filled with a raspberry buttercream and lemon curd. It's beautiful and it's so light. I just think it was really, really delicious, very moist, really, really Moorish. I mean, I really would love another bit. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> The second tier is an experimental combination of pomegranate sponge with a raspberry buttercream and a raspberry and passion fruit jam. It's really good as well. Did you like it? I did. I think I do prefer the orange layer, but that's, uh, the pomegranate actually was a really interesting taste. It's lovely. Do you think your guests would enjoy them? Nothing not to like. It's delicious. And that's assuming I haven't eaten the whole cake first. <laughs> <laughs> now for the judge's verdict on these fruit-flavoured cakes. Well, girls, I think you have technically baked a really beautiful set of cakes. Well done. It's a real skill to be able to inject so much moistness into a sponge inside a wedding cake, and you've absolutely achieved that. Wonderful combination of flavours, and I think you've really showcased your skills to the absolute limit. Well done. Thank you. Finally, it's the self-taught siblings from the Cake Shop Bakery. David and Lindsay's large but elegant cake is hand-piped with a simple design, topped with a posy of roses and dotted with hundreds of pearly sheen petals. It's beautiful, it really is. It's breathtaking from a distance as well as there's so much detail close up. Lindsay and David took a gamble with their root cake. Beetroot, sweet potato and courgette have been scented with cinnamon and cardamom. Not a classic wedding cake, which could divide opinion. Do you like the flavours? I honestly didn't think I was going to, but um, actually I think it tasted really unusual and I really enjoyed it. It was really nice. I think the root cake is delicious and it's so speckled with jewels and colours. I think it really befits a wedding cake. I think it was a really good decision. Really nice. Well done. Next they try the chocolate cake with its hint of orange and chocolate buttercream. Chocolate was beautiful and really moist and fresh. Lovely, really delicious. You think that's something that you'd like to serve at your wedding? Definitely. Beautiful texture, wonderfully moist. Well done. Tasting over, Ashley and Andrew must choose the cake they want as the centerpiece of their wedding day. Well, you've seen all three wedding cakes and you've tasted all three wedding cakes, but you can only choose one Have you made a decision? We yes, have. we have, yeah. We'd like the cake from? The Cake Shop Bakery. <laughs> Ashley and Andrew have chosen the cake for their wedding day. But the ultimate decision on who will be crowned Britain's best bakery rests with the judges and they now face their final deliberation. They'll be taking all three days of finals challenges into account. I can see why the bride and groom chose the Cake Shop Bakery's wedding cake for their wedding. That cake was really elegant. It, it was understated, but it really did deliver. They enthuse a real passion for their baking. We saw that at the market challenge. They were very happy to engage with every customer. They love to tell a story about where the products have come from, how they've come together. We saw that with the iconic bake, that wonderful produce all collected from and around the River Deben. But their iconic bake for me wasn't the best I've ever seen, wasn't the most technical. If we weren't crowned Britain's best bakery now, I'd be absolutely gutted. I think Maison Macy went for broke with their wedding cake challenge. They've incorporated different flavours, different tiers, different shapes, a vase of flowers, but the cake was far from technically perfect. We see that ambition often with Maison Macy. The market challenge, they delivered sheer volume. But unfortunately, the quality wasn't there. But they really pulled it back on their iconic bake. They delivered something 
so iconic, so distinctive, it could have only come from them. They show glimpses of brilliance, and when they get it right, they are absolutely bang on the money. It's been a long journey with a lot of different tasks and, and some very hard tasks. Winning Britain's Best Bakery would be um, an achievement. For me, the Angel's Share wedding cake, absolutely the best cake I tasted. I'm with you there. The combination of flavours were absolutely beautiful. Technical bake, perfect. The Angel Share have always had a wonderful attention to detail and presentation, and they showcased that on their wedding cake. The detail was flawless. And we saw more of their style and presentation with the market challenge. Mm. Everything was made, baked, and pre presented with style. With the iconic bake, we gave the Angel Share the opportunity to create something new. I don't think we got something truly iconic, truly representative of them and only them. I have to say that everything I've tasted from the Angel Share, I've enjoyed. I don't think we should be defeated. We're from Yorkshire and we're not going to give in. We have every chance of winning. Gosh, this is so tough. Mm. We have to make a decision and for me there is that one bakery. They have such a ability to produce technically wonderful bakes, a real fusion of flavour. They are an exciting bakery and they never fail to deliver. I think we've got a winner. Let's go and tell them. Bakeries, this is it. This is the moment of truth. It has been so hard to come to a decision but we have made a decision. It's our pleasure to announce the winner of Britain's Best Bakery. And the title goes to... Cake Shop Bakery. The Cake Shop Bakery clinches the crown of Britain's Best Bakery with their exuberant display of modern British baking. Here you go, you've earned it. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Thank you. Congratulations. Really well done. Really very, well done. very, very well done. Well done. Mm. You deserve it. Yeah, well you done. really do. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Our aim was not to embarrass ourselves. <laughs> or mainly dad. <laughs> it's a real honour. I can't describe how pleased I am right at this moment. It's, it's really good. It has been a proud moment for us and, and for our staff and for our bakery and for our region, I think. We've done our best. We're really proud of what we've done. I think the Cake Shop Bakery were the best and they've won it. Really pleased with the lovely people as well as great bakers. The Cake Shop Bakery, they are worthy winners of Britain's Best Bakery. Let's not forget, David and Lindsay have only been running their family bakery for the last five months. That really excites me, because from what I've seen already, I can't wait to see what they do next. I think baking is in their blood. They're leading, they're not following. They are real trailblazers. Britain is lucky to have the Cake Shop Bakery. Mm -hmm.